Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week I'm gonna teach you how to set up a separate mix for your subs. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So you may be asking yourself, why would you even want to do this? And it's pretty simple. It's just another level of control to be able to say what will or will not be going to your subwoofers. Uh, so a typical reason why this could be an issue is maybe you have certain microphones like your pastor's mic that um, is sending frequencies that are happening to come into the subs. Uh, and so what you can hear in the room, it kind of, kind of sounds like this kind of sounds like that where it's almost like you're listening to it from the other side of the room like through a wall um, and that's because maybe you don't have your um, your high pass filter set correctly um, or maybe you don't even have the option if you're on an analog board so this is just a way of saying okay I don't even want the possibility that that mix um, that instrument can go into the subs so I'm gonna have a separate mix that is only for things that I want to come out in the sub so let's take a look here. I've got a, uh, a diagram to kind of explain this like I normally do. Um, so we've got a fairly typical band mix here. We've got our drums, kick, snare, two toms, two overheads. We've got our guitars. So we've got a bass guitar, an electric guitar, and an acoustic guitar. We've got our keys. So there's keys or piano. And then I also have a track set up in case you're running um, loops or anything like that. Uh, and then we have our vocals, our effects, and finally our playbacks, which is anything that's a full range signal that's like a iPod or a CD player, DVD player, your pro presenter computer, that kind of thing. Um, so what's happening is um, like normal, we've got a left right mix that everything is going to. Um, and in some scenarios, you might have a crossover where everything's going there and then your crossover saying, okay, from this frequency up, is gonna to go to the mains, and this frequency down is gonna to go to the subs. Um, but again, if you don't have an option to set things quite correctly, then you might see there's a little bit of bleed over into the subs. So in this example, everything's going there, but there's gonna be a crossover set up so that it's only a certain frequency range. Um, but then over in the uh, subs uh, aux, we've got another auxiliary mix set up, excuse me, um, this is a post fade mix, which we're gonna talk about in a moment here, um, that we're only gonna send the things that we want to send to that. So we've got our things that need low ends. So we've got our kick. We're not gonna send the snare or the overheads, but we are gonna send the kick and the toms. We've got our bass guitar. We're not gonna send the other two electric guitars. Uh, and then we've got our pianos. Even though you might be mixing these not to have a ton of low end in them, it is inherently a full range instrument. Um, so I would go ahead and send that to the to the auxiliary mix, but you can always cut out the low end that you don't want later on uh, doing this. We're not gonna send the vocals or the effects, so that will keep your pastor's microphone from coming through the subs. And then um, we will be sending our full range uh, signals, our playback, so our iPod, ProPresenter, everything we just talked about. So everything's sending to the left, right, but then on a separate control, we are only sending low end things to the subs. So this week I'm gonna show you how to do this on a Behringer X32 or Midas M32. Uh, again, the reason why I'm using this console is because a lot of churches have them, uh, but I've also seen that a lot of churches are setting this up incorrectly. Um, especially if you're trying to get a really good sounding uh, recording for like a podcast or um, to give out to the members or for the band to listen to later. Um, I find that if you don't do this correctly, the low end information is not going to sound right in the recordings. So there's a certain way that I do it and I, I tend to get very good results in this. Um, not my words, other people saying that. Uh, and this is why. So um, I don't have the board in front of me today. We're gonna to be using the X32 edit um, program, um, which is very similar. There's a couple things that are different that I'll talk you through. Um, and then I've got a, a picture of the X32 to kind of talk us through it. So um, when you are making a mix for the X32 or M32, um, 
you, you we're going to talk more about this in later episodes, but you have 16 bus um, mixes. This is for sending to um, wedges or to in-ears or to effects, um, maybe a recording mix, depending on what you're doing. Um, so these are assignable. You can change them to be pre or post fade. You can do some really cool things with them. And again, we're going to talk more about that in later episodes. But there is another mix um, that is separate from these two that is only um, a mono um, post fade mix. So it's made for this kind of thing. And you can find that it's in the matrix system, even though it's actually a mix. Um, you can see over here, right next to the left, right, there's a MC that stands for mono or center mix. So this is again, it's a post fade mix that is made to work um, in conjunction with the left, right mix. So real quick, before we start doing anything, one thing that will help you out is there's a way to link these two channels that will make your life a lot easier when you're trying to level out your sound system. So we're going to do that real quick. We're going to go up to setup and then config. And then over here in the link preferences, there is an option I've already selected. It says MC depends on main left, right. So what that means is that once you kind of figure out your levels, if you need to turn the house system off for a moment, maybe a fire alarm's going off or something, um, you can hit mute on here or turn the fader down and it will actually turn down the subs fader as well. You won't see it happen, but you will hear it It'll just all of a sudden go down. Or if you decide the whole mix was uh, a little bit too loud and you bring this down, it would bring down your subs as well. It's a useful little trick. So now we've got that set, we'll start with our subs level down until we get everything assigned to it. And then I'll show you how to level out your volume. So uh, if you're looking at the actual console, um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can select an individual channel, say the kick, and then up here, let me zoom in a bit, at the very top section, you've got your, um, your main bus section. This is what's gonna say, is this signal going to the stereo bus? Is it going to the mono bus? Both, neither, how much level, that kind of thing. So again, we're looking at this chart here. This is correlating to the same thing. So if we have like the kick drum selected, we're gonna click stereo bus. So it's going to our main left, right. But then we're also click on mono bus so that it's going to our, our mono bus to our subs. And then we're gonna use this level control to set it up to 0, 0.0. This number is very important. I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit, but this is saying that the level that's going to the main left, right is the same level that's going to the subs. Uh, it's not being boosted or cut. It's exactly the same volume. So you can go through and you can do that on every individual instrument, or there's another way to do it where you can go uh, on the, the, mixer itself and you can select your main i'm sorry your mc uh, fader and then if you hit sends on fader in the real world it would then show you what is being sent to that mix unfortunately they um need to update the the on or the, i'm sorry the editor program because it's not showing me that so i'm going to simulate it for you if you were to hit sends on fader then it should look like this and now this input section over here is showing me um, what uh, what things are going to the mono uh, center uh, fader, and they should all be set to 0, 0.0. So you can see I've got my kick, my toms, my bass, all my keys. This particular church has a lot of keys, including a sub bass, which obviously should just go to the subs. And then I'm also sending all my playback devices, including uh, my iPod and a USB playback that they have set up. So all these things are going to uh, that fader, to my MC fader. My MC fader is then going out to my subs. So now that we're sending everything to that fader, but the fader is down, um, you can now go ahead, if you've got this routed to your subs, um, you can play something and figure out what's the volume that the subs need to be set at. So uh, I'm gonna take my iPod channel over here. 
Uh, I'm making sure that the EQ on that channel is completely flat. There's no boost or cut in the low end. And then I'll turn it up and you'll start to hear it come out your main left to right. Um, if you have your crossover set correctly, you won't hear any low end. It's just me mids and highs. And then you can start to fade in your subs so that you get the appropriate level. Now, the reason why I'm starting with the iPod uh, and I'm keeping everything at 0.0, .0 going to the subs is because we want our mix to sound as much like that iPod as possible so that when you um, listen to your recording later, send it out to your team, put it online, whatever you're doing with it, you want that to match up as much as possible. So if your church does a lot of like Hillsong sound, uh, songs, uh, you could play a Hillsong recording through the iPod, level out the subs so that it sounds awesome the way you're going for. And then if you're mixing your band to try and make that sound happen, then you should be good to go. So in this scenario, all I'm doing is, oops, excuse me, I'm using my, um, my subs mix purely to say if something is going to the subs or not. I'm not dictating what level, the, everything that's going to the subs is going to the same level um, as the iPod is. And that way, if say the bass guitar has too much low end in it, rather than me uh, turning the sub feed down, which some engineers do, if you're in a purely front of house scenario, that's fine. Um, but if you were to turn the subs, um, level down for the bass, then your recording is still going to be just as bassy because it doesn't know that you've done that. It's receiving your recording off your main left, right, but you're turning down a totally different mix. that's going to the subs. So if you keep everything at 0, 0.0 on that, um, that send and then say, okay, there's too much bass in here. Well, then I'm just going to turn down the low end. Um, that will make it sound better in the room. And then in, if you set it up correctly, it should sound better in your recording as well. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.